Hey, what's going on, guys? Chris from Commit to Be Fit. Um, I apologize for us not posting a ton of videos lately, but we're back. We're going to be hitting the videos up very regularly. Uh, we're going to be giving you guys mobility drills and we're going to do 30 days of practice. I want you guys to practice these mobility drills for 30 days and, uh, and I want you guys to post what your results were. How, how do you feel? Does your body feel different? Are you recovering different from workouts? Are you prepping for workouts differently? Um, just how's your general mobility and flexibility? All right. So uh, what I want to do today is I want to share with you guys uh, the first thing I want to post actually isn't just one mobility drill. Uh, this is something called the Limber 11. Um, I found this from Joe DeFranco from DeFranco's Gym. Um, a lot of people will know who he is. Um, he was rated one of the top 10 best gyms in, in, uh, in America. I mean, that's a pretty huge honor. And uh, he's a very close friend and mentor to uh, one of my personal coaches. And I, I follow him when it comes to the strength and conditioning aspect of training. Um, so this is one of the programs that he posted called the Limber 11. So it's what I want to share with you guys today. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I want you guys, this is your 30 day challenge. I want you guys to practically apply the Limber 11 today to, uh, to the next 30 days. I want you to do it every day, at least once a day, if not twice a day, but a guaranteed once a day for the next 30 days. And I want you guys to post how you're feeling, how you're enjoying it, uh, and just your general overall mobility. How do you feel with it? All right, um, so we're gonna show you the Limber 11, and the only things that you're gonna need, guys, is going to be a foam roller and a lacrosse ball. That's all you're gonna need, okay? So um, keep your eyes on it. Here comes the okay, limber guys. 11. So first one on the limber 11 is we're going to foam roll our IT bands. IT bands are a huge part of people's mobility issues, um, lower back issues, uh, inflexibility issues, okay? So IT bands are something that really, really need to be worked on quite a lot. So we're gonna use the foam roller to work the IT bands. What we're looking for is 10 to 15 passes up and down the IT band, okay? The IT band is the muscle or the tendon that runs up and down uh, the side of our leg here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll from just below the hip, okay, the, the hip bone, right, where we have that insertion, all the way down to the side of the knee, okay? So we're gonna use the foam roller for that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bottom leg straight out, our top leg is gonna come in front, all right, and from there, we just roll up and down the IT band. Now you can come down on your elbows or up onto your hands, it's up to you, right? But what we want you guys to do is focus on making sure that you guys take your time, right? The longer you can spend on the foam roller, rolling up and down the IT band, all right? And the more pressure you can apply to that roller, right? The more results you're gonna get out of this exercise. So make sure that you guys Take your time, 10 to 15 passes. So a pass would be down to the bottom and up to the top. That would be one pass, okay? So you're gonna do that 10 to 15 times on both sides. So you're gonna do one side, and then when you're done, you would just flip over and do the other side, okay? So 10 to 15 passes, use that foam roller, try to apply as much pressure as you possibly can all right, um, obviously don't go too far where it's extremely painful, but it's gonna be very uncomfortable. There's nothing comfortable about rolling your IT bands. But if it is uncomfortable or painful in any way, that just means you need to work it more, okay? The more consistently you can roll your IT bands, the easier it's gonna get for you guys, and then everything else is gonna feel a hell of a lot better. All right, so that's number one. Roll up All right, guys, number two on the list. We're going to foam roll our adductors, okay? We're gonna foam roll our adductors. This is a muscle group that doesn't really get um, too much self myofascial release work done to it. So we're gonna use a foam roller to help uh, work our adductors a little bit. So what we like to do is, we would like to have you guys start with the foam roller kind of on a 45 degree angle, okay? So the foam roller is on a 45 degree angle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work basically from the inside of the knee, okay? All the way up as high as you can up into your groin. Okay, so foam roller is on a 45. Okay, we're gonna get up on top of that roller and we're just gonna work all the way in towards the knee. 
and then work our way back out. So now here's another little tip for you guys that if you find a spot that's kind of crunchy or painful in any way, and this works for the IT bands as well. If you find a spot that's really crunchy for the IT band, like right here, I've got a bit of a, uh, a tough spot for me. It's kind of uncomfortable. Pause there for a second, and then you can do some flexion and extension while you're working that spot. And you can do the exact same thing on the IT band, IT band as well. Find that spot that hurts, and you can do some flexion extension on it. And you guys are just going to continue to roll. Again, we're going to do 10 to 15 passes up and down our adductors. All right? When you guys have done that on one side, you're going to flip it across, right? Come up, flip it across, set it up on a 45 degree angle, all right? Make sure that you roll the other side. Okay, guys? So that's your adductors. We're going to do 10 to 15 passes on that again. Uh, and that's number two. On the All right, guys, up. number three on the list. We are going to use our lacrosse ball, and we're going to work out our glutes, okay? This is an exercise that is never comfortable. It's going to hurt like hell. Um, it's plain and simple. It's going to hurt. It's going to suck. Regardless of how often you do it, it will get better, but we do store a lot of tension up in our glutes, okay? So you're going to roll for a minimum 30 seconds all the way up to two minutes per side on this depending on how long you can take it, but a minimum 30 seconds at the, at the least, okay? So we're gonna take our lacrosse ball, right? What I want you guys to do is, we're gonna try and get you to cross your leg, okay? If you can't cross your leg, you can do this same exercise with your leg extended straight ahead and then let your foot drop open, right? To get the hip to open up a little bit, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the lacrosse ball into our glute, okay? Somewhere into your glute here, our piriformis is up here, which is a, is a, a muscle that needs to get a lot of, of uh, self-myofascial release work done. Okay? So we're here in the glute. What I'd like you guys to do is try and cross your leg. And from here, you guys are just going to roll around into the glute and try and find some, oh man, I got some good spots up in here. Okay? You're going to find a lot of painful spots. There's going to be a lot of stringy kind of tendon uh, in there and I mean it's, it's not gonna feel comfortable but you gotta work it out you gotta roll it out keep working your way through it uh, again minimum 30 seconds on on each side up to two minutes the longer you can take here the better if you have any sort of uh, lower back lower lumbar issues um, this is definitely an exercise is going to help you right you're gonna learn to love this one this is gonna help you out big time okay so you're just gonna work your way around Right, once you find those spots, you can kind of hang out there, right? 30 seconds to two minutes per side. Okay, when you're done, you just take the ball across on the side, cross the other leg, and uh, there you go. Okay, so that's number three. Is that number three? Yes, that's number three. Okay, guys, number on four limber. on the limber 11 is called the bent knee iron cross. Okay, what we're going to do here, this is one that I struggle with uh, myself because I don't have a ton of uh, lower lumbar mobility. Um, so this is something that I'm working on personally myself. This is my 30 day challenge is to do the limber 11 for 30 days. So number four here is called the iron cross. Okay, uh, the bent knee iron cross. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be laying back. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna have our arms up to the side, palms are down, right? Feet are up 90 degrees, toes are just above the knees. We're gonna drop the knees, try to keep them pinched together. Ankles and knees and thighs pinched together. Right? We're going to drop the knees off to the side, but as I drop the knees off to the side, okay, I'm going to take my head and look the opposite direction. My head will be back against the floor, and I'll look the opposite direction. So, my head's back. If I'm dropping my knees to the right, I'm going to look my head to the left. Or if I drop my knees to the left, I'll look my head to the right. i got a little bit of dyslexia there. And then when I drop my knees to the right, I'll look my head to the left. Okay, and again, try to breathe nice and deep into your belly, right? Inhale through your nose, nice and deep to your belly. Exhale through your mouth. And you're going to go from side to side, right? Remember, alternating. So as your legs go to the right, your head looks to the left, okay? Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to try and do about five to ten passes on each side. Okay, so five to ten each way. Um, take your time with it. Again, 
Take a nice big inhale as the knees are up in that 90 degree position. And then a nice long exhale as you drop them over. All right, take your time, breathe deep into your belly, in through your nose, out through your mouth. All right, uh, enjoy that one. That's a nice stretch for the lower lumbars. Um, yeah, so I'll see All you right, guys next. next. is gonna be a roll out into a V-sit. This is an old school uh, wrestler warm up that they like to do. Uh, this is also one of my favorite ones. I thoroughly enjoy this one uh, before my hockey games or before any of my workouts. Really helps to get my lower lumbars, my glutes, and my hamstrings warmed up and relaxed and open, okay? So this one here is, uh, is fantastic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, 10 reps in total, okay? And what it looks like is this. We're basically gonna, uh, we're gonna start here. There's two ways you can do this. If you're relatively new to this and you have a hard time getting your legs to go back, I'll show you the movement and I'll show you how to modify a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically take our legs, we're gonna roll back, open up our lower lumbars, and then as we come through, we're gonna tuck, extend the legs wide, and then reach forward. Okay, so I'm gonna slide back a bit so I can make sure you guys can see me. From here I tuck, extend back. Every time I go back, my legs will go back a bit further, spread the legs, and then I slide forward, come back, tuck, come back through. Open up, tuck, come back, and then through, open up. If you have a hard time getting the legs to go back, you can grab here and assist yourself into that tuck position, and come back through, and reach, okay? So you guys are gonna do 10 reps of the right, so the next one is called the rocking frog stretch. All right, rocking frog stretch um, is a fantastic groin hip opener, okay? So what we're gonna do here is basically, you guys are gonna be in uh, a kneeling position, like so. I'll go on a kind of an angle so you guys can see. What I want you to do is you're gonna take your feet out to the side, bring the knees out a little wider. Think that you're gonna be on the inside of the knee and you wanna think that the floor is pulling your skin, right? We're, we're pulling the floor in here, okay? So that floor should be kind of pulling your skin, getting your hips open. So the knees and the hips are open, Right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to the elbows, and from here, notice how the elbows are under the shoulders. From here, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna drive the hips back. Right, I don't have a ton of mobility right now. And then we sit forward, and you pause for maybe a one or a two count. I'd say about a two count. Take a nice big inhale, exhale, sit back, and then come back up. Sit back. And every time you go back, you're gonna try and sit back just a little further. All right? So, oh boy, yeah. <laughs> That's a great hip and groin opener for you guys, okay? So that would be called our rocking frog stretch. So I want you guys to take your time with that. Uh, you guys are gonna perform that about 10 reps. You're gonna do 10 reps of that. Again, focus on the breathing. Breathe deep into your belly. Exhale through your mouth as you sit your hips back. Okay, guys? 10 reps of the rocking frog. Okay, guys, so the next one we have is fire hydrant circles. Now, this is one that I personally struggle with myself. Uh, this is definitely one of my goals for the next 30 days is to improve my, my hip mobility on the fire hydrant circles. So this one here, you're gonna do 10 reps forward, 10 reps backwards. The key to this is keeping your heel tight to your ass. That's the important part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be in this position here, okay? So we're, we're on our hands and knees. Uh, knees are under the hips, okay? Hands are under the shoulders. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take one foot, we're gonna tuck that heel, okay? Flex the foot, tuck the heel tight to your ass. That's the important part, because we don't wanna go and do this exercise and start kicking our leg everywhere just to make it look like we're getting more range. Uh, we also don't want to, when we do the fire hydrant circles, to be dipping through the upper body to make it look like we have more range of motion, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna stay structured, work within the limited range of motion that you are right now, and see what you can do and prove in 30 days, okay? Again, this is not one of my amazing ones. I'm not very great at this one, so uh, keep that in mind, but watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna tuck that heel tight to our ass, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some fire hydrant circles, right? Open up the hip, turn it in. Open up the hip, turn it in. My goal here is to keep that heel as tight to my ass as I can. Right, we're gonna do 10 circles one way, 
And then we'll do 10 circles back the other way. This is the hard way for me. All right? So those are your fire hydrant circles. Okay? As you can see, I struggle a lot on the reverse when I'm going backwards, when I'm driving my hip open and back. Um, so again, this is one that I'll be, uh, I'll be definitely working hard on for the next 30 days. Fire hydrant circles, 10 forward, 10 back. On okay, guys, so next we have mountain climbers. Okay, mountain climbers are an exercise you guys can do uh, in a conditioning workout, but this style of mountain climber here is actually going to have a slight pause uh, and more of a hip flexor and uh, quad style stretch to it, okay? Um, you think normal mountain climbers are tough. I think these ones are even tougher. Okay, so what you're gonna do here, basically, you're gonna start off in a traditional mountain climber position, okay? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna have the foot outside, slightly up on the ball. And what we're looking for here, I'll switch sides, is that you can see my back leg, okay? Is what we're looking for here is we're looking at dropping that hip through a little bit to get the hip flexor and the quad to open up on that side. A little bit of groin over here, groin and hamstring on the front leg, okay? And from here, once I've gotten used to that, I'm just going to take a little bit of a quick switch, stretch it out here, right? What we're looking to do is we're looking to do 10 each side here. So the first few, you're going to take a pause, pause the first two on each side, and then what you're going to do is make it a little more dynamic. From there, you're going to shoot into it, shoot into it, shoot into it, nice and quick. Really try and sink that back hip. Keep the leg as straight as you can, though. Don't let it go real soft. Okay? And again, you'll do 10 each leg on those mountain climbers. And again, like I said, you thought the original mountain climber was tough. These ones are tough as well. That's a great hip flexor groin and uh, a little bit of hamstring opener as well. Alright, so next we're going to hit right. up Kozak squats. Alright? Kozak squats are a great way for you to stretch out the groin, the hamstring. Uh, it's a tremendous mobility drill. So. Um, what we're going to do with the Kozak squats is we are going to do 5 to 10 reps each side. Uh, I'm also going to show you a way that you can kind of modify this movement if you find it challenging to be uh, down in just like a, an unassisted Kozak squat. So uh, what we're going to do for the Kozak squats are right, we're going to be in a feet shoulder width stance, okay, uh, or wider than shoulder width stance. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to shift our weight from one side to this. So I'm going to sit into my right foot. I want to make sure that the, my right heel is down and that I'm driving that knee open. What I'm going to do with the other foot is I'm going to allow the other foot to come up onto the toe. Okay? I'm driving the knee open, keeping this heel down. From here, I'm shifting across and I'm opening up the other side. Okay? Again, I'm driving the arm into that knee. I'm getting a little bit of a double whammy where I'm able to get my hip to open up here as well. Again, this toe lifts, shifting from side to side. Okay? Open it up and back to the other side. So again, you'd be doing five to 10 per side. Now, uh, for me, I'm not overly mobile through the groin and hamstrings yet, so Kozak squats are challenging for me. Um, so a great way to modify would be to use something like this. Okay, if I was to pull this out, all right, what you could do is you could have somebody who's not overly mobile, they would use this to help support and keep their back posture up when they do their Kozak squats, right? So they can use their hands on here to help support them to make sure that they can keep their back posture up make sure they can sit back into this heel and lift the other foot okay so those are the Kozak squats all right again you're gonna do five to ten each side and then we'll move on to the next all right. exercise. so what we're gonna do here is a seated piriformis stretch okay so what you do is you're gonna take one leg bring it across okay and you can use your arm your elbow your forearm whatever you want and basically all you're going to do is you're sitting on the edge of say a chair or a bench or a box if you got something like this, okay? And what we're trying to do here is um, it's okay for us in this exercise, we're going to be doing 20 to 30 seconds per side. It's okay for us in this exercise to round out our posture a little bit. Normally everybody talks about keeping a good strong posture. In this one it's okay to, to round out the posture and it's also okay for you to move around a little bit see if you can get different fibers. Okay, so what you're gonna do, basically, you're gonna have your leg crossed, okay? You're gonna be pushing into that knee to get that hip to open up. And all you're gonna do is basically lean forward. Okay, I'm gonna move up a little bit on my box. You're gonna lean forward, get that good stretch, 
This is super tight for me, okay? And again, you can kind of move around, shift your weight, see if you can work different fibers, lean forward a little bit, right? And you're just basically gonna hold this for 20 to 30 seconds per side, all right? Again, breathe through it. You wanna think about breathing into your belly, deep out the mouth, right? Breathe deep into your belly through the nose, breathe out through your mouth, all right? So you'll do 20 to 30 seconds, bring it down, and then switch the sides, right? Same thing on this side. And drive that hip open, it's super tight on this side. Lean forward as much as you can. And again, you can shift your weight around. See how much, how many different fibers you can hit there, because I'm getting some good ones, all right? So again, 20 to 30 seconds per side for your seated piriformis. All right guys, so this one is our rear foot elevated hip flexor stretch, okay? You're gonna do, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do five to 10 reps per side and you're gonna do a three second pause, okay? So what you're gonna do is whatever leg or whatever hip flexor you wanna stretch, that foot is gonna go up onto the box. So you're gonna put your foot up onto the box. Your knee is gonna be planted on the floor. And the other leg, you should have a nice relatively 90 degree angle in the hip and the knee. Okay, so a couple of issues with this is that a lot of people think that when you want to stretch out the hip flexor, that you really need to open up the chest and arch your back. Okay, we don't want to be in this position when we're doing a hip flexor stretch. That gives us a false sense of flexibility. Okay, um, so what I want you guys to focus on is this. You're going to take both your hands, you're going to lean forward. Okay, with a strong neutral spine, you're going to tuck your pelvis, you're going to curl your pelvis, you're going to close the gap between your, your hip and your rib cage. You're going to make that gap smaller. Okay? So, keep the belly nice and tight. My pelvis is tucked from here. I can now work my way up to standing. And I want to keep that tucked pelvis. Okay? Belly stays nice and tight. Okay? You'll notice when you get up into this position, you can use your hands to support you here. When you get up into this position, you're going to have a really good stretch throughout your hip flexor and into your quad. Okay? Now, when you're here, you've got your pelvis tucked. All right? What we're going to do is Five to 10 reps, you're gonna squeeze your glute. Whatever foot is up, you're gonna squeeze that ass cheek and hold it for three seconds, okay? So you're gonna squeeze the butt cheek and hold for three seconds, then relax, okay? When you relax, don't let your pelvis tip again. I don't wanna be back here. I want you guys to keep it curled, okay? So five to 10 times, you're gonna squeeze your butt cheek, hold for three seconds, and then relax. Okay, once you've done that five to ten times, somewhere in that range, wherever you feel like you've warmed it up, you've stretched it out, okay, you bring your hands back down, relax the hip flexor and quad, from there you can bring your leg off, okay, and then you would rinse and repeat on the other side, okay, five to ten reps, three second hold, make sure that you tuck your pelvis, I don't want you in this arch position, that's not good, we're going to have a false sense of flexibility, we don't want a false sense of flexibility, we want flexibility, alright guys? So that is your rear foot elevated hip flexor stretch. Okay.